this week, you must tattoo a black and gray bug on the throat. Oh. All the way up to the underside of the chin. Oh. oh. Holy oh. shit. Damn. Throats are so difficult. If you have minimal workspace, you got the chin that's involved. It's very delicate skin. It's very painful. I have my throat tattooed, and it was awful. And this week, we're testing your ability to use finesse. Finesse and tattooing means being able to delicately deal with a client and apply an intricate, smooth tattoo under pressure. Today, you must create Victorian tattoos. What? During the Victorian era, the invention of sewing machines and new machinery for making lace made it possible to create complex patterns at a fraction of the cost of handmade. Tattoos emulating these patterns and fabrics have grown in popularity. You must translate these intricate styles to skin. Lots of lace, jewelry, with filigree, fine line work. I'm really nervous about this one. But there's more. More. Which is? There is no better test of your finesse than tattooing some of the most delicate skin on the body. The throat. Oh, Jesus. Throat tats. Throat. I know exactly what that feels like. It hurts like a mother It's hard to breathe while they're doing it. It feels like getting cut with a scalpel the entire time. Today, finesse is important because you're tattooing a very sensitive area. Throat tattoos equal pain. So it'll be like that. You want to get in, you want to get out. You want to do the least amount of trauma possible. If you screw up, this person's going to wear a turtleneck for life. I have to put this on in pieces. It's just not going to go on all at once. This is super stressful. If this design's off just by a hair, it's going to be totally obvious. Hang your head off the table. And let me see if I can get the area a little flatter for me. I'm willing to spend extra time in the placement just to make sure it's perfect. Lean forward like this real quick. It's just not lined up with your chest. If I pull this thing off perfect, I'm so going to have the win. Four hours to go, guys. Four more hours. I think it's smart on this challenge to just play it safe. I'm deciding not to do anything too crazy and elaborate so I can take my time and do a nice tattoo. One hour remaining. Final hour. Whoa. I mm. know. Oh, <laughs> I'm tattooing a piece of Victorian lace to mimic a dress that her grandmother wore in a wedding photo. I know I can nail this. Today, you had to use finesse to create intricate Victorian tattoos on very delicate skin. Eric, we will start with you. How hard was it to outline this guy's neck? Tough. You definitely have some areas where you folded some things up and then had to match the other side. Definitely a fine line between blowout or a scratch. When you get into the details and you look at the finesse side of this thing, there's a lot of inconsistencies in what should be a symmetrical design. Little piece of filigree has that little double bump over there. You go to the other side, there's no double bump. This tattoo just has a lot of unattractive aesthetics to it. Matt. Overall, the tattoo is dark. From 20 feet away, it looks like a black handkerchief around her neck. I do know it will lighten up through time. But your outlines aren't going to straighten out over time. The outlines that are in the swirl patterns, there's a lot of hiccups in those lines. You definitely have considerable blowouts happening near the collarbone of the neck. That's where your lack of finesse is. Why would you do that straight line across the top? At least give her some little scallops off the top and break it up. It doesn't look soft. It just looks like you slit her throat. Duffy. Just the outline alone is a great example of finesse. All these curves, very smooth, all have a very natural flow. All your little circles are only hard, look very concentric. It's pretty great. Great, perfect. Why are you crying? God, it's just a good feeling. Come on, lady. This is what it's all about, right? Like, this is why you came. They're definitely happy tears. I needed it. Beautiful tattoo. Thanks. Time to poll the judges. Who's got the best tattoo of the day? Duffy took this one, as far as I'm concerned. A great design, a great fit to the skin, great application. It's perfect, smooth, beautiful. And on top of everything, it's the largest amount of work. Anybody that you're up against can't deny your win. The judges have decided the best tattoo of the day goes to Duffy. Today, you had to use finesse to create a Victorian tattoo on your canvas's throat. It's time to find out 
who the human canvas jury determined had the worst tattoo of the day. Matt, you're here because the human canvas jury determined that you had the worst tattoo of the day. Heather, why did the jury vote Matt to the bottom? I actually also voted for Matt because I thought it would be a lot lighter. I know that the gray wash will considerably lighten up. Only the areas where I put the deeper blacks will actually stay dark for you. That's not gonna lighten that much. I think Matt's playing this up a little bit, and I feel bad for you. It's gonna be a dark triangle. Matt, I completely trusted you, so I was really thrown off when I saw how dark it was. It makes me feel terrible to stand here and know that you're not happy. Heather, thank you so much for coming down and joining us today. Thank you. Matt, I'll tell you outright, it looks like she's just got a black hole in her neck. It was my intention to make it look like she had a really nice piece of jewelry. The tattoo for me is very off-putting. It's so much hard work, man. It's a shame for it to have gotten away. Eric, this thing just doesn't say Victorian. All of the males that were tattooed today, I don't think any of them really have a Victorian look to them. I mean, you want to give some dude some lacy design. You can make those flourishes as tough as For me, it has to start with a drawing. And I feel like this drawing does not have the effort that you have to put forward to fight these guys off. Well, it's time to determine who's going home. This is all about the choices. And for me, Eric's choices today were not what worked for him. The judges have decided, Eric, you do not have what it takes to be Ink Master. Please pack your machines and close shop. This week, we're testing adaptability. Adaptability is in every tattoo. On different parts of the body, the skin is different. You have to adapt to it. You have to run your machine differently. You have to approach the design differently. Coaches, Today, you must tattoo an incredibly difficult part of the body. Oh, no. The under chin. Oh, my god. The skin under your chin is really delicate. It's hard to pull lines on, get solid saturation. It's hard to even lay out a design under there. Look, I know tattooing under the chin is difficult, but I myself can't exactly tell you why or how it's difficult because I've never done it before. I got a feeling I'm gonna have to free on this. I'm trying to lay a stencil nice and flat and even. It's going all over the place, it's sloppy. I'm gonna have to adapt and simplify my design and hopefully it looks good on this really weird, hangy skin. I have to freehand it. Freehand me, sir. So he's not willing to give the canvas the tattoo the canvas wants. Right. I can hear you, douchebag. Sometimes it's your canvas tattoo. Listen, you keep running middle of the road. I didn't know second was the middle of the road. Be second at the finale too, Siri so gotcha. Someone gets real grumpy when people start talking to him. You're not talking to me, you're talking about me. It's difference, bro. <laughs> see what the hell I'm doing. Everything's swelling up. I can't see what I'm doing. I just have to go off of instinct and follow my gut and my intuition. Oh, that's my neck. <laughs> if I drop the ball, my team does not get the advantage. And I've pretty much proven to these other coaches that I can't compete with them going into the master faceoff. Have time, what do you think about a tiny, like, light gray shade around? No the light gray anything on the neck, but will not hold. I mean, light gray wash. Listen, I gotta get this done, bro. Let it rock. Let him do his thing, huh? Steve, if you came off the black with this and dipped it in this, it would look adult, adult blend. Dude, I don't, I got this much. To, I'm not blending, you know what I'm saying? Jeremy, it's his day he's tattooing. Like, if he doesn't take our input, then he's not taking it. This is your final hour. Maybe just peppering just a little shading off those blacks up, give a little skin just to fill that gap just a tiny bit. Get through that, get it solid, get it clean as mm -hmm. Oh, that sucks. I'm dropping my machine. It hit the tip. I just got to rewrap it and everything. I haven't dropped my machine in like 10 years. I'm not sure why I'm nervous right now, but people behind you telling you different things to do, it kind of gets in your head. Five, four, three, two. One, that's it, machine's down, time is up. No more ink. Holy <laughs> Yo. <laughs> no way, man. Nice. Hopefully, bro. All I can say.
All right, coaches, it is time to critique your work. Let's start with Steve. It's a tough tattoo. You made a smart choice just doing the skull and the roses. You've got a lot of really solid, dense black in that soft skin, and then you also contrast it with the really bright red and the roses. It looks symmetrical, and I like that you went down and covered the whole throat. You did a killer job. Thank you so much. Ah, uh, Steve's tattoo sucks. The overall design is just ugly, man. Thanks, bro. Ciao. DJ. I like the strength that you have in the simplicity. It was a super tough area, especially a triangle. That was why I was so fumbled up. It happens. All tattooers falter. But how you get back up from the slip, that is what I'm talking about. You made a really strong, clean outline. You really toned back the eye. You really went with a simple color palette. Simplifying the design, great example of adaptability, especially for that spot. Next up is Anthony. The smoothness and the quality of the black and gray, that reminds us why you're sitting as a coach. Beautiful side, beautiful entryway to the piece in the center, beautiful exit, and the precision of that beak dropping down to a perfectly sharp point dead center. Everything's dark and breathable. This tattoo's absolutely gorgeous, but I don't think it met the challenge. He dodged the one place that you had to tattoo, the under chin. Judges, it is time to determine the winner of this flash challenge. As far as adaptability goes today, I really like what DJ did and the way that he went along the jawline, brought this design so it's readable from a mile away. My vote is for DJ. Anthony, to me, went above and beyond. Doing big black and gray, we always see people do it too dark where they lose the contrast or they lose the shape. Anthony's figure is very dynamic. Vote for Anthony. Chris? Today, Anthony. The judges have decided the winner of today's Flash Challenge is Anthony. Thank you, guys. This feels amazing. I don't have as much experience as these other coaches. I pretty much smashed them. That's what I needed. For this elimination tattoo, we are testing contrast with black and gray bug tattoos. Ooh. Ooh. Bug tattoos? Whoa. Damn. From delicate wings to tiny little legs, the smooth, shiny shells. You must create a bug tattoo that looks like it could crawl right off your canvas's skin. Damn. If you fail to create contrast from dark to light, your bug tattoo will fall completely flat. So realism bugs. Where's the twist? Where's the twist? Oh, oh shit, here he is. Oh. Oh. I wasn't emotionally prepared for this. But that's... Not all. Oh, Why would it be? Not. So wait, what did we forget? Placement. Oh, God. Oh, boy. This week, you must tattoo a black and gray bug on the throat. Oh. All the way up to the underside of the chin. Oh. oh. Holy oh. shit. Damn. Throats are so difficult. If you have minimal workspace, you got the chin that's involved, it's very delicate skin. It's very painful. I have my throat tattooed, and it was awful. Throat tattoos are tricky. That's true. You must create perfectly smooth blends while your canvas is breathing and swallowing, which causes the area you are tattooing to continuously move. Wow, what a challenge. Oh, my god. This is going to be a fun one. For me, that is. Not for you. Yeah. Oh, Thanks. wow, Dave. I'm super excited about this challenge because it's almost like these artists get to take a step into my world. It takes skill to really figure out how to render all of the different details that bugs have. Transparent wings, super glossy, shiny shells, to all of their tiny little pieces of the exoskeletons. Nobody's going to have fun today. It's an extremely tough subject matter, and it's an extremely tough placement. You're trying to pull the cleanest, sharpest, most precise lines on a canvas that's moving and breathing underneath you. This subject matter is something that I love to tattoo. A black widow spider with a heart spider web and cute flowers on either side to frame it. Are you stipple shading the whole thing? I am. Yeah, that looks great. How's the scorpion? Um, big tough guy isn't as uh, tough as he thought he was going to be. Oh, no. That's usually the case, though, unfortunately. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The pressure is so high today because fine line black and gray is all about technical application, and throats are really hard to tattoo. 
I don't really do a lot of black and gray at home, so I'm really nervous on how this is gonna come out. I'm always like feeling like all the other competitors don't take me serious and stuff like that, you know? That's the thing about being an underdog, or feeling like that at least. I feel like an underdog. Yes. Like, you know, am I really an underdog? I don't know, it could all be in my head, but... Uh, Sometimes you could be your worst uh, critic. Yeah. You know? If you're a black and gray tattooer, you work in different tones. But if you're not used to it, it's really difficult to like know where to stop and start because sometimes the skin gets really irritated and it's really difficult to differentiate between what's bruising and what's color. Yeah, I'm taking a big chance showing them things like that they haven't seen from me. Mm -hmm. This is like a different style than what, you know, like the whole stipple look and everything like that. That's like not something they used to for me, so. It's a gamble, right? As long as you love it at the end of the day, that's mm -hmm. all that matters to me, so. I know I will, you're going heavy black work, so of course I will. Because this is a lot of heavy black. Good. Five, four, three, two, one. That's it, time's up, no more ink. Woo, we are done. How you think you did? I, looks good to me. There's a lot of talented people in this room doing black and gray. It's yeah, not really my thing. I mean, mine either. That's I'm scared. Today, you had to show contrast tattooing a black and gray bug on your canvas's throat. You were being tested on Ryan's specialty. Let's see how you did. Katie. All righty. The artwork is very in your style, but it doesn't do a lot for her in terms of the shape of the neck because the legs are a little bit stumpy. If you brought those legs down and really made them come to a point, you would give her like a really beautiful shape. Elongate that neck. I would have loved to see you pull some of that web together with the outside flowers and make it feel like it's one piece. It does look like three different tattoos that are a little bit disconnected. Gia. Oh, all right. You made a beetle look beautiful. I love how you used all the dark leaves around it to frame it up. You were able to take every single little piece of the face, separate it, and use a different tone of gray that worked together. It's little circles that you put on the bottom shelf is really, really cool to create that contrast to the center of it. I think this tattoo is badass. Thank you. Pawn. Let's do this. All right. I love the moon. It fits that area really, really pretty. But where the antennas come up over the moon, you should have attempted that to be a little bit more symmetrical. Yeah, I didn't realize that until right now that they were. I don't know what you did with those top wings. They almost look like so much black, it's tribalistic. The canvas I chose, if you want something dark, I went maybe darker than I would have liked to have gone. I feel like it kind of gets a little frumpy. It's just heavy, bro. Judges. It's time to determine who had the best tattoo of the day. Gian pulled off an incredible tattoo in his style, and it's hard to debate it. My vote is for Gian. What's selling me on Gian's tattoo is there's so much design in this tattoo that the side looks amazing, and it has to look good from every angle. My vote is for Gian. I mean, my vote is for Gian. The judges have decided the best tattoo of the day goes to Gian. Thank you. Congratulations, you are safe from elimination. This week, you were being tested on contrast. Based on your work, one of you will be packing your machines. The judges have decided the two artists in the bottom are. Not the only big two. Katie. Okay. Ready to fight. Whoa. And pawn. Yep. I can't believe it. My skin in your dude. Katie, the reason you were in the bottom two is the tattoo is unsymmetrical. Even though the spider is asymmetrical, I'm happy with my contrast. I purposely made the spider the darkest. So when it heals, I do feel like the spider will be a little bit more prominent. Where the errors lie are your decisions and your composition. Pawn, when doing these moths, the most important thing is symmetry. When the top wings don't match each other, that's an issue. It's an eyesore. This isn't my favorite tattoo I've done, 
obviously. It's a good from far, but maybe far from good. 10 feet away, it looks awesome, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You had the opportunity to pick whatever you thought you were the strongest at, and the choice you've made might have cost you $250,000. It's time to determine who's going home. If I have to choose one, my vote is for Pond to go home. My vote is for Katie to go home. I'm on the fence, honestly. I would wear Pond's tattoo, but I think your tattoo will age better, Katie. My vote is for Pond to go home. So we have two votes for Pond and one vote for Katie. I hate both of these tattoos. Symmetry on the neck, you have to hit it on the dot. And based on that, my vote is for Pawn. God damn. The judges have decided, Pawn, you do not have what it takes to be Ink Master. Please pack your machines and close shop. Uh -huh.